Praise the Lord and welcome in uh, to another Midday Motivation. Uh, this is a Midday Motivation, Midday Motivation Monday edition uh, where we're actually coming to you on Memorial Day. And uh, the one thing about Memorial Day, I, I don't typically wish people happy Memorial Day because in a lot of senses it's difficult to be happy on a day like this. Um, and so I know that this is a, t a time that's set aside for us to recognize uh, those who have paid the ultimate sacrifice, who've lost their lives uh, in the service of this nation in some form or fashion. And I know that uh, there are many whose names go unknown, um, not merely because they were lost in combat um, in places where their remains were not brought back, but also in situations where uh, in this country um, their sacrifice was made during a time uh, where um, what they did and who they were um, were not recognized uh, in a way uh, that, that we recognize people today. Uh, many individuals weren't even recognized as human beings uh, during the time in which they served and sacrificed uh, for the betterment of this nation. And so um, on this Memorial Day, just want us to be reflective, also want us to be uh, prayerful uh, that as a people, uh, we know that many of the things and the benefits we enjoy right now are the result of sacrifices that were made by people uh, that came before us and we don't ever want to take that lightly and we never want to take that for granted. I would encourage you as you're coming in to take a moment to uh, put that word that um, represents your mental state today uh, as well as uh, how your day has been going. Uh, take a moment also to hit the share button uh, to try to bring some others in to join us. Uh, most people uh, should have a little bit of uh, time on their hands right now uh, to be able to participate with us uh, for this uh, time of midday motivation. And I know that we've been spending um, the past few weeks dealing with topics related to mental health, uh, considering that May is Mental Health Awareness Month. And this is going to be the last midday motivation week in the month of May. So we're, we're dealing with a topic uh, on happiness. And then um, next week, as we are going into the month of June, uh, we'll have a new set of topics, but just wanted to, you know, kind of recap that we, we dealt with loneliness, we, we dealt with friendship, and now we're dealing uh, with happiness. And, and that's going to be uh, what we'll cover today, Wednesday and Friday of this week. So again, uh, if you haven't already, drop that word that represents how you are uh, feeling, your mental state, uh, how your day is going so far, and also take a moment to share so that those that are, are not tuned in uh, will be notified and then they can come in and join us. We'll take a moment to pray. And as we typically do, we want to pray for all those that um, are risking their lives to go out each day uh, in, in essential capacities, not just healthcare professionals, but those who work in a variety of different jobs. And, and we're thankful for them. And then we're also thankful on this Memorial Day for the sacrifices that were made for us. Uh, by many who went ahead before us, those that may have served um, in the military as well as those who served in other capacities that weren't recognized uh, in the early stages of this nation. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We thank you, Lord God, for giving us this time to be reflective, reflective of those that have given their lives in the service of others and this nation. We appreciate what you've done in their lives to allow us to be the beneficiaries. And we're asking, Lord God, that we would also be willing and mindful that there's going to be sacrifices that we're all going to have to make for the greater good. We ask that you would bless us to have the mentality to be able to embrace that reality and also to put it to practice. We thank you for blessing us, keeping us. We thank you for every individual that is coming together for group care today in this midday motivation. We ask that you would bless those that have been deemed essential workers, and particularly, Lord, as the, uh, uh, the various operations are reopening across this nation, and people who may be uncomfortable are having to go into environments they have not been in for some period of time. We're just asking, Lord God, that you would give wisdom and understanding to all those involved, 
I bless those that are in leadership that are making the big important decisions that affect so many. Those that are in government, those that are in corporate leadership, as well as those in spiritual leadership. Uh, bless us all, Lord God, that we would make the right decisions. This we ask right now in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So we thank God for each of you that have tuned in. We, we appreciate uh, the time that you take to uh, join in because this is group care. We are uh, checking in on one another, making sure that we're in a good place and that uh, we're able to support one another and help one another through these challenging times. And I know for some, again, on Memorial Day, you know, it's not one of those things where people say happy Memorial Day. It, it brings back painful memories of lost love, loved ones that are very near and dear to us. Uh, fathers, mothers, brothers, sisters, aunts, uncles, just some, grandparents, there's just so many people um, that on this day we're remembering. And, uh, and so it's, it's, it's appropriate that we would talk about happiness on a day like this because I think the challenge has historically been that people's concept of happiness uh, has been one that's not appropriate. It's certainly not the one that God had envisioned, and it's not the one that God puts in his word. And so when we think about happiness and we think about what God wants us to uh, contemplate when we're dealing with happiness, we're going to spend time over the next three um, meetings uh, talking about happiness. And so I'll give you a quick roadmap of kind of where we're going to go. So today we're going to speak about um, getting to the true core of happiness by uh, making sure we understand, um, you know, first, second, and third order thinking. Uh, usually, uh, when we're thinking about things, we just kind of look at things on the surface. But God is trying to get us to get a little bit deeper in, in our understanding of how these things work. And so, w once we establish how to get to the root of what happiness is, then we're going to define happiness, and then we're going to kind of spend a little time trying to understand how happiness uh, works in practice. So that's what we're going to do today. Then we're going to talk about the ingredients of happiness on Wednesday and, and really get a feel for uh, the way happiness functions in our lives. And then thirdly, uh, on Friday, we're going to spend more detailed time talking about the difference between being happy in a um, in an emotional sense and being in the state of happiness, which is a mentality. And so we'll, we'll talk about that. Now, Again, you say, well, this is Mental Health Awareness Month. What does this have to do with mental health? Uh, well, the, the thing is that the challenge for many of us as it relates to uh, happiness is that we have not come to grips with the fact that happiness is an emotional state. Um, um, well, at least many people think happiness is an emotional state, which it is not. Um, it, it may be at, a, at one level, but uh, at its core, it is more than just an emotion. And so therefore, many of us are trying to hold on to the emotion of being happy and we want to do things and engage in behaviors and engage in activities uh, that would allow us to have that emotional feeling of being happy uh, for an extended period of time. So basically what I'm saying is that you want this feeling right now that you are happy, you want that feeling to last forever. You want that feeling to be uh, from this point going forward. You do not want happiness or you do not want the feeling of being happy to only last for 15 minutes or 10 seconds or however fleeting that emotion might be. Uh, we want it to have longevity. Uh, but unfortunately, the way we calculate this is we're trying to engage in activities thinking that the activities are going to result in happiness and that the happiness that results from these activities should last forever. And you, you hear it a lot and people say, well, I'm, I just want to be happy, so I'm going to quit my job. I just want to be happy, I'm going to go do this. I just want to be happy, so I'm going to marry this person or I'm going to be in this relationship. What they don't understand is that those acts do not bring happiness. Uh, they might bring a ten temporary emotional condition uh, that feels good um, but it's fleeting, like all emotions. They do not last a long time. And so many of us have felt really good, we're upbeat, we're positive, and then just out of the blue, we, we start to feel uh, less enthusiastic, uh, less encouraged. And, and it just seems like all of a sudden, for no reason, uh, we're, we're feeling uh, something contrary to what we were just feeling uh, moments ago. And, and we just said, well, 
Um, how is it that this comes along? I, I, nothing has changed. I haven't done anything different. How is it that this feeling has gone away? And that's because we've emphasized emotion and emphasized feelings over the reality of what happiness is. Happiness is more than emotion. And so we'll, we'll talk about that uh, primarily on, on Friday, but we're going to get there. Uh, so one of the things I, I wanted to talk about uh, at the outset is that um, there's what we call first, second, and order think, uh, or, uh, third order thinking. And, and what happens in uh, that is that a lot of times the first thing that you encounter when you're dealing with a situation is the first order. Uh, then when you press a little bit further, you can get to a second order and then press further, you get to the ultimate. And so a lot of times people will ask you, uh, if you want to make a decision, they say, well, ask yourself why. And then once you answer that why question, then you ask yourself why again. And then you answer that why question, then you ask yourself why a third time. It's more likely to get to the root of what it is uh, that you're trying to uh, understand. And so let me give you a couple of examples and then we'll get to what it means in happiness. So uh, uh, you, you ask people and say, well, you know, I want to I want to exercise. Um, uh, but, you know, I, I, I exercised for a week and then I gave up. And, and the question is, well, why did you give up? Well, I gave up because I couldn't find the time to, to do it every day or uh, it, it, it started to hurt. And so therefore I gave up. And so when you are at the first order, um, the things that you encounter initially tend to be the things that determine whether you stick with it or, or give up on it, primarily because these things outweigh your real core reason for doing it. So I wanted to exercise, but I didn't want it enough that I was going to endure the pain. Uh, I wanted to exercise, but I didn't want it enough that I was willing to carve out the time out of my schedule to make sure that I participated and made it happen. So um, at the first order, I allowed pain, I allowed uh, time limitations to stop me from continuing to exercise. Uh, but those that are, are able to push forward, they, they will continue to exercise because they, they were doing it because they want more energy. They want uh, to have a better appearance. And so I'm, I want a better appearance more so than um, my uh, aversion to pain. Or uh, I'm willing to carve out the time because I do want to have more energy. I want to have a better appearance. So you push into the second order. And what happens there is that for some reason you don't look any different. Uh, you may be healthier, you may have exercised for a while, but your appearance does not change immediately and it doesn't change in the first month. It doesn't necessarily change in the second month. And so at that point, the reason why you were doing it uh, now is no longer materializing. So you say to yourself, you know what, I'm going to stop exercising. Uh, I'm going to stop exercising because not only was it painful and it took a lot of time, but I'm not seeing the results that I was looking for. And that result being, I wanted my appearance to change. I wanted more energy. I didn't, I didn't see those things. And so therefore I quit. But um, if your ultimate goal it was at the third order and that you were doing this uh, for your health and for ultimate well-being, you're going to be willing to ignore the fact that you're going through a little pain in the beginning, that it takes some time and you have to build it into your schedule and that you are not going to see immediate um, physical results. Uh, there are a lot of people who are healthy, but their appearance suggests uh, different because we have in this society uh, this belief that you have to be rail thin in order to be healthy. Uh, and the reality of the matter is you can have healthy people who have been exercising, uh, but because of the nature of their body shape, uh, they're going to look differently than everybody else who may be in a magazine. So the reality of this is, is when you come to grips with the fact that there are certain things that you're going to uh, benefit from, but you can't see it initially, uh, you're going to press past the first order, second order to your third order um, reasons for doing things, which are more ultimate reasons uh, for this. It's the same thing when it comes to morality, that uh, when people are doing the right thing, it may be just for selfish reasons. It may be situational. And so when they're not getting the results that they were looking for, they're going to quit because their first order reason for doing it uh, was purely selfish, purely situational. Uh, if you go a little bit deeper, you might do certain things because that is what your family expects you to do or societal. So it's beyond just your own personal desire. You go and you start doing it because that is a family expectation. Uh, it is a societal expectation. 
But until you get to a universal reason for doing it, uh, you're never going to be able to have that sustainability. You're never going to have that, that willingness to stay committed. And so that's why it's important to press to that tertiary level or that third order uh, of thinking. So what does that have to do with happiness? Well, happiness uh, that many of us uh, are, are looking for uh, is never at the third order. We, we're looking at it as, you know, just this physical feeling, this physical uh, experience of happiness. You know, when you're running, it just, it, there's just a, a, a physical manifestation, uh, whether it be um, you know, goosebumps, whether it be uh, this, this light feeling in your stomach, kind of like when you're on a roller coaster. Uh, th these are the kinds of physical manifestations. And when you're in a, a situation where you stop feeling that, you feel, okay, well, then I'm not happy. I need to make a change. I need to stop doing this. Um, then at a second order, it may be just emotional. You just, you just feel happy right now. But um, when that feeling goes away, you start to say, well, I got to do something different in order to get that feeling back. It's kind of like a drug addict that has to continue to take more in order to get a higher high. Because the first time they took the drugs, they got high. They've never been able to achieve that again because it, it takes more and it takes other things. And so um, when it comes to happiness, for many people, it's just like a drug. It is something that is elusive. They have been chasing it for, for so much uh, time. They put energy, they, 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 they'll put their lives at risk uh, chasing that feeling uh, that they were looking for. And so what, what God has, is trying to get us to understand is that happiness is more than that. And that when we tap into eternal happiness, and uh, you know, I, I spent quite a bit of time over the years, I, I know back in 2011, I did it again in 2015, uh, to 2019, and also again in 2020, uh, I spent time in the Sermon on the Mount uh, in chapter five of the book of Matthew, dealing with the Beatitudes. And we, we spoke on what true happiness is because blessed, uh, you know, people will say that blessed or blessed um, in the, the Greek uh, it means truly happy. And so when it talks about the blessed uh, attributes or the attributes that lead to eternal happiness uh, that are found in the Beatitudes, that, that is what um, God wants us to understand. So, you know, I, I, I even have some here on Facebook, if you kind of go back into the history of Faith Christian Church and what I'll do probably Wednesday is share with you specifically the dates that you can go back and watch uh, some of the discussion that we had on the Beatitudes or what true happiness is like. So because I, I did that over a course of months, and so I don't really have the time to do it here in these few minutes, but it, it's a resource that you can go back and tap into and understand that true happiness in its internal flavor is more than emotion. It's more than a physical feeling. It is something that will allow you to have um, happiness in uh, situations that don't seem to uh, warrant uh, the feeling of happiness. And so that brings us to the definition of, of happiness. And, and so happiness, um, as found there in Matthew 5, um, blessed or happy, uh, which is the word makarios, which means well-off or prolonged state of healthy equilibrium. Let, let me repeat that for you. Well-off or prolonged state of healthy equilibrium. So what that is, is basically saying is uh, that it is not a fleeting feeling, it is not a temporary emotion, but it is a state of being well off or prolonged healthy equilibrium. So you can be happy in the midst of unfavorable circumstances. And when we recognize this, it's good for our mental health. Uh, because many times the reason why our mental health is challenged is because we are expecting something that doesn't occur. So let me just pause there for a moment and, and just ask that uh, if you're just tuning in, you're just, you're just getting in connected with us, or you just haven't done it at, at, at this point yet, uh, take a moment and drop a word into the comments uh, that represents your mental state or how you're feeling right now. Uh, and one of the amazing things about this, as we come on, when we drop that word that represents how we're feeling, our, our mental state, uh, that may have been our mental state when we first tuned in, but it very well may turn out that by the time we finish, uh, our mental state has changed. Why? Because the mental state that we're putting forward is emotional often. 
and in many ways, being emotional, uh, our emotions can swing in a matter of 20 minutes. So from the time that this started to the time we get to the end of this session of group care, we very well may have gone through a range of emotions. And so if you haven't already, I would just encourage you, drop that word that represents your mental state or how you're feeling. And then I would also ask, uh, if you would, uh, just take a moment uh, also to hit the share button and encourage uh, someone else to come in and join us uh, for Midday Motivation, our, our group care session. So if you look at this, blessed or happy, um, that is being the well-off or prolonged state of healthy equilibrium. Now, what is unhappiness? Well, unhappiness typically results uh, from the miscalculation that what you are pursuing can bring about a sustained feeling of well-being and that that well-being, that, that feeling of well-being won't go away. So in other words, the reason many people are unhappy is because they miscalculated that I'm about to do something that is going to make me happy once and for all. Uh, when I go and do this, I'm going to be permanently happy. And the reality of the matter is, if you are tapping into an emotional state that you're wanting to feel a certain way, uh, I just, I'm here to let you know uh, that getting married is not going to do it. Getting a new job is not going to do it. Uh, hanging out with these people is not going to do it. Having more money is not going to do it. The reality of the matter is there is no once and for all solution to your emotional ups and downs. That real happiness is the ability to be in a well-off or a prolonged state of healthy equilibrium despite the fact there are going to be emotional changes in your life. Happiness is not rooted to a, a, a certain feeling that is eternal. It is connected to something more fundamental. What is that? Is that it's better to know than to feel. And this is something that you hear church folks say all the time. You better know that you know that you know that you know that you know. What are they saying? Is you have to know something because sometimes you have to know something that you don't feel. Uh, you're feeling a certain way, but you, you know something else is the case. And so there is a state of knowing uh, that is very important. So uh, authentic sense of knowing what happiness is and that you are in that state of happiness can serve as the bedrock or foundation upon which you build. When you know what true happiness is and you know what eternal happiness is, it prevents you from going too deep in, into a dark place when you miscalculated that this activity was going to bring me this emotional state. That when I feel that I'm going to do these certain things and all of a sudden, emotionally, I'm going to be in this high point for the rest of my existence. Uh, but when you know what happiness is, it is a good foundation upon which to build. Uh, unfortunately, many people have not embraced the maxim that's found in 1 Corinthians chapter number 3, verse 11, which says, For other foundation can no man lay than that which was laid, which is Christ Jesus. There is a foundation that you have to lay, and that is why godliness is at the core of happiness. To be in right relationship with God is an essential ingredient for you to have eternal happiness for you to have long-term happiness, for you to have stabilized happiness. So let's take a moment and look at this in the scriptures. Uh, so this kind of help us uh, understand this. So the first scripture we're going to look at is Pro Proverbs chapter number 17, and we're going to look at verse 22. And then we're going to take a moment to look at 1 Timothy chapter number six, and we're gonna read verses uh, three through 10. Uh, this will help us to kind of put all of this into perspective and then we'll kind of wrap things up uh, and, and kind of give uh, a little guidance uh, to what it is uh, that God wants us to understand. So uh, if you look at Proverbs chapter 17, verse 22, it says, A merry heart doeth good like a medicine, but a broken spirit drieth the bones. Uh, so a healthy mind state or a healthy mental state is a important ingredient uh, to being happy. Uh, and so you, you think about this, and, and, and we talked about these first, second, and third order thinking. Uh, it's a struggle for us. It, it's a challenge for us 
Uh, I'm reminded of what the psalmist, the Grandmaster Flash said, that it, it's like a jungle sometimes. It makes me wonder how I keep from going under. Well, what he's basically saying is, look, it's tough out here. You know, I, I find myself dealing with a whole lot of stuff. It's a struggle. Uh, but what we have to realize is that in this struggle, we need to know that happiness is more than just an emotional roller coaster. Happiness is not just a feeling here and a feeling there. And it's not a set of emotions that can be solidified permanently just because of an activity we engage in. It's important for us to understand that. And so uh, when we think of First Timothy chapter number six, verses three through 10, it says, if any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness. So if somebody's teaching something, um, trying to get you to embrace something that isn't rooted in godliness, you already know you're in trouble. Uh, he is proud, knowing nothing, but doting about questions and strifes of words, whereof cometh envy, strife, railings, evil surmisings, perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth. Supposing that gain is godliness, from such withdraw thyself, but godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, let us be therewith content. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which will which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through many sorrows. In other words, that pursuing things, pursuing stuff, pursuing money, pursuing activities to the exclusion of your relationship with God will get you in a place where you're going to mess yourself up and you will deviate not realizing how far away you have deviated from God. Uh, and so, I, you know, I say this uh, from the perspective of a person who has been a serial entrepreneur uh, for a good bit of my life. And I realize one thing for certain is that we're living in a day and age where a lot of people are passing hustles for entrepreneurship. You have a lot of people teaching things that are in error. And so when you hear what he's saying, don't allow people to teach otherwise. Don't allow people to be teaching things that, that are not right. And so, you know, you've got people out here trying to peddle health by telling you to drink alkaline water and, 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 and use alkaline foods. And they're, they're, they're giving you all this stuff divorced from God. Uh, they're, they're trying to tell you that if you engage in certain activities, you know, if you eat this particular diet, you're, you're going to have eternal life. You can't have eternal life unless you be born again. We need to quit listening to a lot of these false teachings that are messing people up. Uh, just like you got a lot of these folks out here talking about, oh, well, you need to get you, you know, five streams of income. Okay, that's great. But then they're teaching all these side hustles. Everybody got so many side hustles, they don't even have a maiden one. Uh, you got people losing their jobs every day because they, they, they're moonlighting, trying to do five different things on their uh, main jobs uh, uh, equipment on, on the computer and the phone and everything else. What, what am I saying? I'm saying that you're listening to the wrong people. They're telling you you're going to be happy if you have side hustles and side pieces and all these kinds of things. The reality of the matter is happiness cannot be found in activities. It cannot be found in stuff. Activities uh, will not bring you happiness. Happiness is grounded in godliness. Your relationship with the almighty God is going to put you in a place where, as we talked about last week, he'll give you a real friend a real friend that will help you uh, to become great. Um, but what you're not going to be able to do is divorce all of God's principles from God and think that this stuff is going to work. And so with all of these false teachings out here, they're causing people to think that gain is godliness. Uh, they're trying to get people to not understand that it's not gain that's godliness, but godliness with contentment is great gain. When you learn how to be at peace, when you learn how to be satisfied, then when things come into your life, you are feeling blessed for having an abundance. If I can be content uh, living a certain lifestyle, if I can be content living a particular way 
and then all these other things come my way, I'm not looking to them to make me happier. I'm just seeing them as an additional resource that I can be a blessing with. Uh, God is bringing us to a place, people of God, that we would understand that when God is trying to get us to understand is that we have to embrace an important reality. Nothing you go out and do, independent of your relationship with God, is going to give you long-term sustained happiness. So I, I, don't, I don't care what anybody's telling you. You can have a 12-figure income. You're still not going to be happy. You can have the most beautiful spouse, the most handsome spouse, whatever it is, it won't make you happy. You cannot depend on somebody else to bring you happiness. Happiness is rooted in the relationship that God has put in you. And then what he's trying to get you to do is use that as a foundation upon which everything else is going to be built. That everything is going to be built on that eternal foundation. And when we recognize that, we're on the road to true happiness. So just to kind of recap, remember first, second and order, first, second and third order thinking we have to recognize that many times we're not willing to press to third order thinking, to that which is universal, that which is eternal, uh, because we're struggling trying to embrace things at these other levels. We want the physical component or we want the emotional component. We're not trying to get to the eternal component. Once we figure that out, we're well on our way. Uh, once we understand that to truly be happy is to be well off, to have prolonged uh, healthy equilibrium, uh, that we need to understand that unhappiness is a miscalculation. Your math was wrong. You thought that activities and behaviors were going to result in a uh, opportunity to have this feeling of being happy uh, without interruption. That is not real. And we need to come to grips with that and that will help us in our mental state so that we don't fall to low lows when, when that feeling of being happy goes away for a little while, uh, that the season that you're in seems to have some challenges and, and you're trying to figure out, well, wait a minute, why am I not feeling happy right now? Uh, because you don't know happiness. You've been trying to feel it, but you do not know what happiness is. And so we're going to talk about how to get to that place. And so that's where on Wednesday, we're going to talk about the ingredients of happiness and on Friday, we're going to talk about happy versus happiness. And so I, I, I'm thankful that you tuned in. I appreciate it. Um, uh, hopefully you, you're going to take full advantage of uh, the time you might have this Memorial Day, um, recognizing uh, that this is a time that not only are we honoring those that have been lost, but take full advantage of appreciating those that you currently have with you. Um, loving on them and letting them know that you care and that you appreciate who they are and what they're doing in your life. And so as we get ready to close out, I just would remind you every Monday, Wednesday and Friday, uh, join us here for group care, 12, 15 p.m. Central Time. Uh, we come together for midday motivation and I would uh, love to see you come. I'd love to see you drop your word uh, and also would love to see you share uh, to invite more into this community. Uh, that as we come together and we're sharing with one another and looking out for one another, supporting one another, hopefully that we will find that there are going to be some days that you're going to come in and you're going to need others. And there are going to be other days where you're going to come in and others are going to need you. Uh, but in all of this, it's all about group care. It's all about us being a blessing one to another. So tune in. You're also welcome to tune in to our Bible studies at 7 p.m. on Tuesday nights, as well as our empowerment prayer 7 p.m. on Thursday nights. Uh, Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. Sunday school and uh, 11 a.m. we have morning worship. Um, we thank God for all of you who've been supportive of, of this um, uh, group care as well as all of the uh, different services we have at Faith Christian Church. Uh, God bless you and we're going to take a moment to pray. Uh, praying for all of those that are grieving right now. Um, very real and, and, um, and present wounds of having lost loved ones. On this Memorial Day, they're remembering uh, those that they have lost. And so let's be sensitive of that. That for everybody, it's not about barbecuing. For everybody, it's not about a grill. Uh, for so many, uh, it just brings back those painful memories of a loved one that's been lost. And so let us pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, 
We thank you, God. We thank you for who you are. We thank you for all that you do. Right now, we appreciate the fact that uh, we that are alive and we that we remain, we appreciate God to be in the land of the living. Uh, but we also know that many have gone before and we are trusting and believing, Lord God, that uh, right now their memories will not be forsaken, that they will not be lost eternally. Uh, but we're trusting and believing that there's going to come a time where we will be raptured with them, uh, that those uh, that are dead in Christ, they're going to be risen. And those of us that are alive and remain, we shall be caught up with them. That is our hope. And that is what we're going to encourage one another with. But right now, God, we're just asking that those who have lost loved ones um, recently, as well as years and years ago, we're just trusting right now that you would give that comfort that only you can. Uh, during this time, that it, when Memorial Day comes back around, while others are celebrating and out grilling, uh, there are others that are finding themselves in a very dark place. Cover them right now and bless them to be encouraged and to know, Lord God, that you are able to keep them and that they can have sustained happiness in you. Uh, this we lift up to you right now, and it's in the precious name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. So we thank God for each of you. We praise God for your presence here today. Um, we would uh, encourage you to stay safe, stay healthy, uh, take care of yourselves and um, uh, make every effort as, as you can uh, to tune in on Wednesday uh, for Midday Motivation and also share as much as you possibly can because there may be some that you fully don't appreciate could benefit from this group care that we have when we come together. So God bless you and we'll talk to you later in Jesus name.